Leaders of Yemeri Grove and Laguna have agreed on a temporary borderline between the neighboring villages. Tension has escalated between residents of both communities over their border. On Friday, what many thought would have been an almost impossible sell was agreed upon by villagers on either side of the land dispute. Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs Dolores Balderamas Garcia says the alternative solution was for the government to establish a no-go zone. I'm happy to say that the parties, meaning Laguna Village and Yamre Grove Village leaders, I'm really happy to say that sitting down with the facilitation of our ministry and other players, other ministries, they were able to come up with their own interim boundary so that they don't, they don't continue fighting. So, and guess what? We, didn't ha we had told them that if you don't agree, the government will have to impose like a sort of a no-go zone, something like an adjacency zone type thing. We have seen instances where landmarkers have been removed from properties along the disputed borderline. There have been also reports of threats from both communities. On several occasions, police officers were called in to assist with quelling these heated disputes. The agreement was reached with some key actions that all parties have committed not to undertake in the disputed area. We had input from our ministry, Ministry of Natural Resources, um, the Commissioner's Office in, in, in Down South. We um, had input from local government. And of course, we had our legal advisor, Mr. Marshalek. So we were very pleased that they were able to come up with that, at least that interim agreement to keep the peace. And we will probably have to have um, an outreach to the villages of Midway and Barranco because they too have a boundary issue. And as the government prioritizes defining a permanent border between Yemeri Grove and Laguna, it must also pay attention to what is taking place with Barranco and Midway, where a similar situation is unfolding. Residents of Barranco, a Garifuna community, are accusing the residents of Midway, a Maya village, of developing their lands. The dispute has seen several cease and desist letters exchanged and flare-ups from both sides. In Indian Creek Village, another Maya community, the first alcalde organized a demonstration against the operation of a recently constructed solar system in the village, days before it was inaugurated. I don't want to talk what I don't know, but I think this may have something to do with some Maya advocates saying that there should be compensation for use of property, etc. But in spite of the protest, Indian Creek Village Chairman Ernesto Chuck spoke from the podium at Friday's inaugural event. He referred to the project as a testament to the spirit of collaboration. Today, our community, community stand united, ready to embrace a future powered by the sun's energy. As we gather here to officially inaugurate this remarkable solar plant, let us remember the immense potential it holds. It is not just physical structure, but a testament to the spirit of progress, innovation, and collaboration. In 2015, the Caribbean Court of Justice affirmed that the Maya people of Southern Belize have rights to lands that they have customarily used and occupied. The Free Prior and Informed Consent Protocol has since been established. The protocol gives Maya communities the opportunity to give or withhold consent to any project within their communities. As you're aware, the Caribbean Court of Justice made a ruling in 2015 that recognizes uh, Maya customary Maya land rights. And as such, uh, it is important that for any development that may come into these communities, uh, for any investment that may come into these communities, that there is a process that you know the communities must be engaged through, and that is the free prior informed consent, the FPIC. And certainly here for Indian Creek and these communities, it was a very lengthy process and a very worthwhile process because we must ensure that we adhere to what the Caribbean Court of Justice has ruled. When it comes down to compensation to Indian Creek Village for the use of the lands where the solar system has been constructed, the government has taken a hard stance against such a proposal. Of course, the government's position is that if we are rolling out something that is going to be beneficial to the entire community, then the issue of compensation doesn't even arise. So that is the government's position. Reporting for News 5, I am.
Paulo Pérez.